I want to tell you what we've been cooking up this past year with The Hateful Eight. The Hateful Eight will have a 70 millimeter roadshow release starting on Christmas Day. What is a roadshow, you ask? Well, back in the day, a night at the movies was a big event. People even got dressed up. They call this a roadshow. It was a limited theatrical engagement with reserved seating, a musical overture, an intermission, and they also gave you a program. A few classics released this way were Gone with the Wind, El Cid, and Ben-Hur, each presented in this grand fashion. We are doing that on Christmas Day in glorious 70 millimeter. <laughs> That's pretty cool, huh? The uh, road shows started in the late 50s and then like committed to them really big time in the 60s. Some of them were like musicals, some of them were historical epics, other ones were like Ice Station Zebra, Battle of the Bulge, Sand Pebbles. Normally, there would be about like 10 extra minutes uh, added to the movie that you'd only get to see in the roadshow version. It's really the way to go. You know, I, I remember going to the Cinerama Dome and watching Lawrence of Arabia and having the intermission. You got up and had a moment to talk about what you had just seen. And the whole thing was an event. I think he is reminding people that the cinema is a place to be revered. If I'm going to shoot in uh, shoot in 65 millimeter and release in 70, um, I'm not going to get 3,000 theaters to convert to 70, even if they wanted to, which they don't. It, it, it wouldn't be possible. However, we could do a roadshow version of such where we go in a uh, hundred screens uh, filtered throughout America in this special roadshow version. Well, here's what makes 70 millimeter so glorious. The movie is shot in 65 millimeter, then projected in 70 millimeter with an image twice the size of what you're used to, which will make your enhanced viewing even doper. When you see the grain of 70, you see the color of 70, like the wide shot inside the barn and the close-ups of the faces, it's beautiful. We all knew we're gonna tackle this. The format of 70 millimeter lends itself to this Western landscape, the size of the frame, the width of the frame. It did take a minute to get a little bit used to the width of what this could see. But within that, it's just special. You can see a lot more than you're used to. It's also very powerful to see something that big and how much detail you get. You just wouldn't think you'd be able to be in something like that again. By shooting it in 65 millimeter, I'm guaranteeing to some degree or another, there will be 70 millimeter film prints out there in the world screening for people who care. You know, 24 frames a second flickering through the projector, creating the illusion of movement. Quentin and his esteemed director of photography, Bob Richardson, were determined to have The Hateful Eight be the 11th feature shot in Ultra Panavision. Ultra Panavision is the widest format there is. When film students come to Panavision and we lead them into the theater and we're lucky enough to have a film print of the chariot race from Ben-Hur, which is 276 to one, it is Ultra Panavision 70, these kids go nuts. They jump up and down. And I noticed another kid going nuts when we showed it, a guy named Quentin Tarantino. We brought him into the theater and showed it to him. And I realized I had actually never seen Ben-Hur in its original 276 format. And it was truly, truly amazing. He said, that's it. You guys have to make this work. The minute I got into Panavision, I went around, and on the far side of the wall in the darkness were these oddly shaped lenses. And I walked up, you know, what are these? Those are the Ultra Panavisions. These lenses hadn't been used since uh, the movie Cartoon with uh, Charlton Heston and uh, Laurence Olivier. So Bob is asking about them, and they're telling him, and he's thinking, whoa, this could exactly be what Quentin would like. Quentin would love these. And so he was like, are they any good? Do they work? And they go, yeah, we think so. <laughs> so uh, um, immediately Bob, uh, Bob said, them, I want these. And I took those lenses when we flew to our locations in Telluride. 
and the test came back and now it's up to him to look at it and say, how do we feel about it? Because I, I wanted to show him inserts, close up, wide shots, landscapes, faces. The day that we all trudged into the DGA to finally see our test footage, we all sat down and the lights went out and these glorious, magnificent, gigantic images came up. And all of a sudden you were in the Old West with these incredible images that we haven't seen for decades. Ultra Panavision, when you absolutely positively got to wow everyone in the room, except no substitutes. The team had his work cut out for them. Re-engineering lenses and retrofitting cameras to shoot the snowy western its quite a feat. Oddly enough, since we don't throw anything away, we came up with actually a total of five sets of lenses, and we decided, let's go for it. We had to retrofit these cameras and rebuild them as if they were brand new cameras. So we would have the confidence that the first day they flipped the switch on these things, they were going to run until the very last day. Bob and Greg were really adamant that they wanted to preserve the look of the old optics. So next step was make the lenses compatible with the reflex and then make them compatible with the camera assistant. And each lens was its own adventure. Um, half the lenses had not seen light since 1965, 66. The fact that you could refurbish them and then send them out for five months yeah. into the mountains, into the cold stage, the freezing temperatures, and they held up. They're completely usable right now. They don't even need any work on them. The level of commitment from Panavision is a testament to their belief in Bob Richardson, in Quentin, and in film. Panavision was 100% on board for what we were trying to do. And it was really lovely, because they actually didn't just look at it as another movie. They looked at it as a legacy movie. Like, if we can pull this off, and we make a good movie, and we, we offer up a really dazzling visual experience for uh, the audience, then it's going to be something that people are going to remember Panavision for. They're going to remember these lenses. They're going to remember this format. I think for the actors, it, it, it's like, oh, we're in a movie. We're not in a hard drive. We're in a movie. Christmas, Tarantino style. Join us on the road show. Put down the turkey leg and the eggnog. Put on that new Christmas sweater and get ready to enjoy the hateful eight in glorious 70 millimeter. The only present you're going to want this Christmas, if I do say so myself.